minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Welcome to each and every one of you for this lovely, lovely show. Mr. Brandon, how the heck are you? I'm good. How have you been? I'm all right. My love, I'm all oh, right. I'm good. Living good. life I'm to the maximum. I'm the leopard print you've got going on Well, the there's night. a reason for that, isn't there? Well. I mean, what would a show be tonight with our lovely guest, Miss Julie Goodyear? I mean, Dame you've got a point. Julie Dame, Goodyear. Dame, Dame, get that, get I am right. going to make this a thing if it's the last thing I do. I'm glad because we're never going to hear Dame Belinda scandal, so we might as well work on it. That's right. <laughs> You're not, love. But at least they remember my name. Now, listen, <laughs> everybody, we have got a marvellous show lined up for you tonight. <laughs> nothing? Nothing? What's, what's on the show tonight? Well, so tonight, well, first up, we've got Emma Dears, who's on to talk to us about Judy and Liza. Judy and Liza. Now, this is a marvellous show that is literally going from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's have a look at this little VT. I'm good. How are you two? Oh, we're, we're, very good. Good. we're all very the best. We've seen Judy and Liza. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> How long have you been doing the show for? Well, it's actually in its ten year tenth year anniversary. Um, yes, I wrote it I just over that. ten years ago. Yeah, um, and we've toured it all over the UK and abroad. So we've taken it on cruise ships, Singapore. Um, but this year, to, it, we should have taken it on tour last year to Margaret's 10th anniversary, but obviously with everything that's been going on, it wasn't possible. So this is yes. our kind of big 10 year, 10 year tour. Yeah. So what kind of thing brought it about? Why Judy and Liza? Well, I'm a big Judy Garland fan, always was as a child, um, love her films and, you know, she's just incredible. Um, I, I went into the West End um, as an actress and I was constantly being compared to Liza, even though I'd never really tried to emulate Liza at all. Mm -hmm. um, but especially American fans used to come to the stage door and say, oh, my God, you're so like Liza. So it was like, right, OK. Um, and then I got offered a job over in Monte Carlo, just a concert, one concert to play her and... Uh, and I loved it. And so I thought that mother daughter relationship has always fascinated me. So I thought, well, let's write a show about it. <laughs> so I did. So what does the Fair show is. entail then? Where are we picking up Judy and Liza from? Well, it's loosely based around the 1964 concert that they both did together at the Palladium um, when mm -hmm. basically Judy was struggling a little bit. So she invited Liza to come and do it with her. And Liza was 19 at the time. And um, I think Liza. You know, it was a real 
show of her talents for the first time you know and a mum you can actually see on the video footage a mum kind of going oh okay <laughs> right she's that good <laughs> um, um, she's on me that's all oh, right okay so a, a little bit well it, it's funny because you see her do things like pull her microphone down and you know and it's all about yes darling but it's you know, it's my show mm-hmm. <laughs> but um it is fascinating so it's loosely based around that however in the first half judy tells liza's story and in the second half liza tells it's no, other way around. Liza tells Judy's and then Judy tells Liza's. And it's mm. it's fascinating how they kind of mirror each other, especially with their songs and their stories and their marriages, you know. <laughs> well, they are quite a sensational family, yes. aren't they? Aren't they just? Yeah, aren't I mean, they the, just? the stories are Hollywood through and through, aren't they? I know, I know. And it's very, very sad, um, but it's also... Our show is very much a celebration of it. It's it's not yeah. about doing anyone down. You know, it really is a celebration of these two amazing talents. Well, um, because they, they are such both amazing performers in their own right, especially, obviously, Judy got big, obviously, doing Wizard of Oz and whatnot and other yeah. films that she'd done. And Liza, whenever she spoke out about her growing up through it, she did mention that she felt she grew up in the shadow a bit. But of course, she definitely yeah. grew into her own performer as she grew up. Yeah, she's well, she's got star quality without question, hasn't she? You know, and, and that's very hard to keep down. And, you know, she developed her own style. She didn't try to copy her mother. You know, she's 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 definitely got style as our Liza. So how do you go about getting into the character then? I have one word and one word only, and that's fabulous. <laughs> as soon as I say fabulous, I'm there. <laughs> you know? And are, are all the songs from Judy and Liza that we know, are they all in the show? Absolutely, yeah. There's a phenomenal amount of songs that you would know, and a couple that you might not know. Some of Liza's are, because I find personally her cabaret stuff is, um, there's a song called Sorry I Asked, which is absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, maybe this time, cabaret, trolley song, uh, Man That Got Away, you know, they're Did all in Liza there. Did we get Liza with a Z? Liza with a Z is definitely oh, in there. So that's one of my favourite performances it's brilliant, I've ever isn't it? Sees when she does Liza with a Z. Oh, it's incredible. brilliant. It's brilliant, and absolutely brilliant. Has, has anything gone wrong um, on the stage during your time? <laughs> Um, well, Helen might not like me saying this, but <laughs> there's a scene. <laughs> there's a scene in our show where it, 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 born in a trunk, where she takes, she puts on the um, the like black jacket and the and, and the trilby hat, you know. Um, and so this one day, she was getting changed. She gets the tr- she takes the 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 shirt off, the blouse off, which she normally has a vest on underneath. And she mm-hmm. took it off and realised she'd forgotten to put a vest on. <laughs> So she, she she is there, you know, getting changed, doing doing born in a trunk with a completely straight face, with with just a bra and an open jacket. Which is... You've had that problem before, haven't you? Huh? Always, yes. As long as I don't forget the bra, I'm generally not too fussed, to be honest with you. Uh, so where can we find this then, with within our lovely region? Right. Well, we're doing Hope Fest, um, yes, which yes. is is um, Hope Theatre's kind of outdoor festival. It's covered, so um, it's not outdoor outdoor um and that's we're on on the 18th of se- uh, sorry 18th of july it's a sunday at 7 30 and um, so tickets can be bought from hope i think it's hope fest um rather than hope mill but if you go to hope mill then it will it will direct you to there oh we'll be able to say hello excellent yeah we look forward to that we're actually doing hope fest as well i believe we're oh are you days. we're on the 20th we're on so the, 20th. Be on the same time oh, yeah. wow, the week. brilliant oh it's exciting so if you isn't could it? keep it clean and tidy please thank you i'll do my best i'll leave you a present <laughs> we know what judy and lines are alike don't stay in character for too long yes anyway emma Diaz, this is, sounds like i mean i'm really into the show it sounds like mm-hmm. it's going to be absolutely phenomenal and i can't wait to see it oh uh, thank so, you Best of British with it, I guess. And, and for uh, you with yours. That's exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you very, very soon. Emma Diaz, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now then, we did promise you an absolute treat today, everybody. Always. And a treat we are delivering via when do we not? this gentleman, everybody. This is Mr. Mark Llewellyn. Hello. Good evening. How are you? I am very excited, well. beyond excited. Yes, part two. Part two, part two, indeed, because we have been there. Uh, we, we heard last week quite a few stories, yep. and this week we're continuing with them. Now, I believe it gets a little bit more risky this week, doesn't <laughs> oh, it? Oh, yes, oh. yes. And this is what I'm here for, the drama. Are you? Yes, the last story is a little bit fruity. A little oh. bit fruity. Mmm. <gasps> and uh, 
Well, I suppose we should we should uh, check it out, shouldn't we? Absolutely. So this is part two of our exclusive interview with Julie, Julie Goodyear. You're still receiving all these letters from all around the world, aren't you? I am, and it's wonderful. Do you realise the impact that you've had on people's lives? Not really. No, I don't. It's just a wonderful thing, and I enjoyed every minute of what I was doing. Mm. It was wonderful. I enjoyed it. And still people watching your episodes all around the world, aren't they? Incredible, yeah. Lots of leopard print in here, in your trademark. You've got leopards <laughs> over there, you've got leopard there. There's a leopard print <laughs> bin over there. It's everywhere, your cushions. <laughs> well, it's always been kind, has not it? Very, very viable for people then. Yeah. Everybody was going mad for leopard print. Yeah, you put it on the map. <laughs> and it wasn't that expensive on places like, you know, Berry Market and whatnot. And is that where you did your shopping for bed? A lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. You were yeah. brought up in a pub, weren't you, in the Bay Horse? The Bay Horse Hotel. Yeah. yeah. So when you went into the Rovers, you kind of knew it was home ground in a way, wasn't it? Mm. It did help, yeah. Because I think that's one of the things that most people say, is when you watch you and Roy as Bet and Alec behind the bar, it mm. A, you felt like a real couple, but the pub felt real, probably one of the strongest times in the street. The, the, it felt like a real pub, but you went to great lengths to make sure everything was right, didn't you? I certainly did. So you love working with Roy, didn't you? Of course. Of course we did. Yep. And I think, like a couple, you also tried to make each other laugh, didn't you? There's one scene that never made it on air. Mm. Mm hmm <laughs> Well, it was a bed scene. And uh, he had a nightie on and I had uh, pyjamas on. And we hadn't been in, in the bed for very long. Five seconds, we were told. All I could hear was... <laughs> and it was a vibrator. <laughs> he got under the covers. <laughs> So I thought, right, OK. <laughs> and, I mean, all the crew, everybody was in hysterics. Yeah. So I pressed my pyjama top and <laughs> it, it played, the only way is up. <laughs> well, that made them worse. <laughs> we were threatened with the sack. I wish we could have still seen it. Well, yes, well, they don't show it. <laughs> it no. Somewhere in a vault, somewhere. <laughs> Quite. Yeah. Everybody will now be looking for that scene. <laughs> wow. Oh, I wish I could get there. <laughs> but was that the thing, really? You both knew what you were going to do, you knew your characters, you would rehearse together, you knew your lines, and then that kind of allowed you a bit of freedom to do your own thing, and that's really why it worked, because it had that extra layer to it. Well, it did, but, you know, it wasn't in the script. No. It was it? <laughs> So that's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, oh, the Wicked Queen. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were lovely. And I was asked to go on uh, a stage when, when, when all the audience was there and, and tell them that these are little people of restricted growth. And Kenny Baker, one of the dwarves, yeah. shouted from the front, We're f***ing dwarves, you <laughs> daft twat! <laughs> And it threw me completely, <laughs> completely. I, I didn't know what to do then. I was setting, but the audience were in hysterics. <laughs> and that means a lot to me. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, bring yes. back bets, everybody. Mm. Let's make this happen. So last week, obviously, we were talking about making her a dame, everybody. They'll keep that going. Dim, Bring dim, dim, dim. <laughs> now, you yes. brought some stuff with you. I have. This is some of um, Bet's jewellery. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're in sync, what can we say? So there's a, a lovely piece there, and then some earrings as well. No, you can't have there these ones. Oh, watch <laughs> me. I mean, them earrings are everything, aren't they? They are. are I'll, just, I'll just... I'll just... Oh, we should <laughs> just going to try them on. I'm just going to try them on quickly. Right. Just quickly. While well, we're here. There so, we go. It'd be a waste not to. We'll want it, though. So when did she wear these, then? Uh, well, she wore them quite a lot. She wore them primarily for the for a licensed victualers do that she went to with Alec. Um, what do you reckon? Oh, it actually suits you. Yeah. I'm they not going to lie. She's got a better neck than me. 
<laughs> what yours is quite No, different. mine's almost folding that far under because I've got no neck that I'm turning to Father Christmas. So it is. <laughs> I'm not sitting on your knee. <laughs> so I brought these in because <laughs> for the second year running, she's donated a lot of jewellery to Willowwood Hospice, oh, um, of which she's now a patron. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, along with me. And um, so we're going to have a sale later on in the year. So if people want to... Sorry, what? Another jewellery sale? Another jewellery sale. But not only jewellery... All about it. All about it. It's my market. There's also, there's also some frocks. Thank you, can't just this scream. Frocks. frocks as well. This, oh, frocks. Frocks. I guess I'm going to the leopard print as well. Uh, most of them are, but there's also some ball gowns as well, like the ball gown that she wore, which is very Cinderella, that she wore to the 50th anniversary event and so on. The one that was on the telly? Yep. Oh, right. Nice. She'll nice. cry if she, she gets that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there's, um, there's a lot of stuff. So it's an early kind of tip-off for your Manchester viewers and listeners, yes. because mm. if you go to willowwood.info yep. and you go to the hospice's website, follow their social media, they're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the lot, Follow one of those, and then you're going to get the first tip-off of when the catalogue is available and the sale begins. These are these are lovely. I never they are lovely. Feathers. I know I've worn them myself, and I quite like them. <laughs> it's nice when you, you just can't take them like nowhere when jewellery's <laughs> involved. You need your nowhere. It's nice. You'd wear them. Come on, you ought to go, don't you? Do you want me to put them on? Come on. Right. I'll put them on you because they're very unique. It's that kind special. of show, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever had earrings? You look like no. <laughs> you see, you go from me looking all glamorous. Mm -hmm. And you put them on him. See how much I fight it. And instantly it's Mr. T, <laughs> isn't it? I was thinking Adam Lambert. Like, I see Adam Lambert's style. Do you see Adam Lambert? I do. Well, <laughs> that says everything. But if unlike um, our Brandon... I feel you, I should have like, this sort of match. <laughs> if you're like Brandon and you've lost the plot, then don't worry, because we can find your mojo as we look into the letter J of mojo with the wonderful Joe Britton. Joe Britton here, your personal performance coach, helping you... Find your mojo and keep it. In today's Minute of Mojo, I'm covering the J in Mojo, Joyful Positivity. If you're feeling really negative at the moment, just know this. It is not easy to be positive because as human beings, we are wired with negativity bias to keep us safe and alive but it is possible to start moving towards positivity when you learn how to do it so if you've lost your job at the moment if your business is struggling maybe you're just feeling really blur here is one thing that you can do to start helping you move towards feeling more positive and it is thinking about what is possible so is it possible that I could find a new job? Well, yes, of course it's possible because I've had a job before or I've found a job before. Is it possible to have a successful business? Well, of course it's possible because there are many successful business owners out there. So think about what is possible and create some possible options and turn one of those options into an action and try that. I hope that was useful for you. Next time on the Minute of Mojo, I'm going to cover the final O in Mojo, umph action taking. And in the meantime, for a daily dose of inspiration and motivation, come and follow me on Instagram. I'm at joebritton.mojo. Dun, 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 dun. I love it. She She's inspiring, you know. She really is. We're up to Jay. I can't wait for the final. Oh. But in the meantime, now listen, music. Music's coming back. We it can is. dance again soon. Oh, only, what is it, two weeks to go? Two weeks to go. We can boogie, we can party, we can enjoy ourselves. I'm and of course, excited. our show will be... I'm glad I said that right, didn't I? Our show... Our show. Our show will be yes. one of the first shows that will be... Uh, Fully allowed to be movable. It yeah. Will be because yeah. we're on the no 20th. distancing, no, no masks, <gasps> so that discounts you. 
Um, <laughs> I'm mask for mask. Other than that, though, if you are thinking about music, one gentleman has had a fabulous career so far with his very lovely music, and he's here to join us now mm -hmm. to talk about his upcoming single and, of course, his career, which spans absolutely wonderfulness. This is Mr. Paul Usher. Welcome, Paul. How are you? Hello. Uh, can you hear me okay and everything? We yes. Can hear you. We can. We can hear you. Oh, great. We can see you've got the sunshine on you and everything. I know. I've tried to use the, the sun as a natural kind of filter. You know, just need a ring light when you've got the sun. <laughs> but I'm doing very, very well. Thank you for having me. It's, it's great to be here. It's, it's a pleasure to have you because we, we actually hear a lot of your music. And I think a lot of people aren't aware just how much music you've actually been bringing out. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to, trying to grasp that dream by writing and producing as much music as possible, even during the pandemic. So it's uh, a good way to be. How did it all begin for you then? Oh, well, many moons ago, um, I was singing in, you know, school choirs and entering, you know, talent competitions, etc. And uh, winning quite a few, just to, just to put that out there. <laughs> and uh, always wanted to play the piano and taught myself the piano and learn I could, uh, you know, make that into songwriting, etc. And just went from there, really. So it was school and a love of like reading as well. And I thought, oh, I can do lyrics and just wanted to show off all the time. So that's where I started. And I've uh, been writing and producing and, and singing ever since. Well, obviously, um, we've listened to a few of your songs that you've released over the years. Thank you. you seem to always have a, uh, a bit of a storyline going through them. Is, is that something you aim for whenever you write a new song? You always want something that a, a listener can connect to? Um, yes, basically. I mean, I never sort of uh, sit down and intend to write a story, but there's lots of, um, you know, just, just anecdotes from life which you want to tell in song and then you can't help but have a narrative. But um, in a couple of my singles... Uh, not to sound like Adele, but th they've been about, uh, of course, you know, a heartbreak and you write about it, don't you? But um, I know my first single was called uh, Jesus is a Preston Boy. And my latest yes. single is called uh, Never Gonna Leave Him. And it's actually about the same guy, but not just the same guy, the same night and viewing it from different angles, etc. So there is kind of a narrative arc to the songs. Yeah. Well, we've got a little bit of um, Never Gonna Leave Him right here now for you. There's still something going on Oh, thank it's, you it's so definitely, much. Um, I've, I've heard it described, it's a very much like um, a meld of a bit of R&B kind of style. Yeah, I mean, um, the previous songs are slightly more R&B than this because uh, my influences range from everything from, you know, Alicia Keys to, to Rihanna and things. This one's slightly more dancey just because we all needed a bit of dance in our lives. We're all clutching Always. for that club, Sweet. clutching for that club. So um, this is more of a, yeah, a, a dancey version. But, um, are you um, planning on getting out live? Anywhere? Um, I don't have any gigs booked at the moment, but if anybody wants to make me any offers, I am here, I am ready, I will bring my piano and backing tracks and things along. But um, yes, I, I'd love to be booking gigs. Obviously, the pandemic's put a big stop to that at the moment. Well, it's coming back yes. soon, soon, soon. But uh, yes, I, I love performing and uh, I'm happy to perform anywhere and everywhere you want me to. Amazing. Is there any more songs coming up that we can be expecting to come out in the next year or so then? Yeah, so I've recorded the next single already and also already recorded the video. So I don't have a release date for that, but it will be September. Just, just don't know the exact date. But uh, I actually recorded the video for that in Blackpool as well. So keeping it keeping oh. it local and northern and things. So, yeah. Um, Paul, where do we find your music currently then? Um, so my name is Paul Usher. And if you put that into Spotify and Amazon and YouTube, mm -hmm. I'll pop up or hopefully pop up in top, one of the top results. Uh, or my website is paulushermusic.com. You can find all my socials there and me using filters again to try and get, you know, make people like the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> And why not? Well, we look forward to hearing a lot more from you over the next oh. few months, years, and indeed, I can mm -hmm. see you going for forever, Flower, with that type of music. Oh, thank you very, very much. I it's hope nice to. to speak to a creative, and we'll uh, we'll speak yes. to you very, very soon. Paul, thank you, thank you, you very much. Oh.
Amazing. Yes. So you can go for music, and then I suppose what you should do is you should also think about what's on, on the, the box. Hi, I'm Hayley and welcome to this week's On The Box. How's everyone doing? Now, the first thing I would love to recommend is a series on BBC iPlayer and it is called Queers. It's a series of monologues which were part of Gay Britannia. Um, and that series was to mark the anniversary of the Sexual Effects Offences Act, which decriminalised homosexuality. Um, there is a wonderful film on Netflix called Falling In Love. Now, in is with a double N because it is a feel-good film about an American lady who wins an old house in New Zealand. Um, there's The Fundamentals of Caring that is also on Netflix. A retired writer becomes a disabled teenager's carer and an impromptu road trip really seals their friendship and brings about a lot of hope as well. Uh, finally, there is a wonderful film on Netflix. It is absolutely hilarious and it is called Tammy. It's a few years old now, but I'd never seen it and I hadn't even heard of it. But it stars Melissa McCarthy, Susan Sarandon and Kathy Bates. And I watch everything with all those three in it. And my gosh, the on-screen chemistry between Melissa McCarthy's character and Susan Sarandon's character, they are grandma and granddaughter, is out of this world do give it a go. I promise you will laugh so hard, but it's only available for another week or so on Netflix. So get on it, as they say. Now, that's it from me. I shall catch you next time. And remember, stronger together. Bye. Well, there's a fabulous little hidden place just on the outskirts of Salford. And this woman is doing something absolutely sensational. Oh, yes. She's got a, well, let's say no more about it. Just watch this. Hello, I'm Alex Smythe. Um, me and my brother currently own the Candy Cabin down in Salford. Um, I'm a mum of three beautiful children. So as you can imagine, I am very, very busy. It was an old fashioned sweet shop. So you, it was, there was, it was every kid's dream basically. In, back in 2012, um, we lost our dad to a huge, huge heart attack. Um, he was on his way back to the candy cabin one Sunday afternoon after running it in the morning um, and he collapsed just down the road. My mum throughout her life has experienced some real, real hardship. Um, so she just got, she, she had like, she was like a lioness. She, she was like just feisty, but she was the most beautiful person that you could honestly have ever met. Um, she just got stuck back in after we lost my dad. She just went straight back to work. So my mum's goal quickly became just to reach 50. Now, for us, that's... I, Me personally, if what happened to my parents wouldn't have happened, I would have just thought I was taking that for granted to reach 50 years of age. Um, unfortunately, back in 2016, in September, my mum had just reached 50 in the March. Um, my mum was diagnosed with cancer of the esophagus so we had to close the beloved candy cabin down so she could undergo chemo and radiotherapy treatment um, obviously as it has living accommodation to the rear um, she still lived at the property but we just clo closed the business side down um, my mum she, she fought she fought and she fought and she fought and she, bat she faced a real hard battle um, she was convinced that eventually she'd be able to open the candy cabin back up um, but unfortunately in 2018 sorry so sorry everyone is intrigued about who the next owner of the candy cabin is going to be and that makes me just so, so much more excited for the next owner because the name was on the map from my mum and the service what she delivered throughout the community for 26 years. It's known as Sharon's Shop locally rather than its name, the Candy Cabin. So it's actually classed as a competition because there's an entry question to get your tickets entered into the draw. So if you do enter, make sure you know the answer to the question. So you have to enter, you have to answer, 
a question to be entered into the draw. So once you've answered the question, then you can go on and purchase your tickets. So it's two pound a ticket. So one lucky winner will walk away owning the candy cabin for two pound less than a posh coffee. We have got to sell 110,000 tickets in total to make the candy cabin the guaranteed prize. If we fail to do that, which is some, I will not be giving up until I will be turning every single stone I can to get those tickets sold. But if worst case scenario, we fail to do that, there still a prize draw goes ahead, but for 75% of the cash pot. So the cash pot is currently at about £14,500 already. So even if we don't sell one more ticket, you are guaranteed to walk away with at least £14,500. I believe that both my mum and dad would just love that someone's getting an opportunity potentially that they would have never had before. I mean, who can afford 40% deposit for a, for a property? It's just, for some people, it's just unthinkable. I wish that it would change the winner's life. Hello my lovely weather watchers and welcome to this week's weather forecast with me, Paul Rudd. Now it might be raining right now, but there's going to be a change in the weather this week. It's going to be more settled and warm weather. An area of high pressure is slowly moving across the UK and Ireland. This should bring a lot of fine, dry weather. And it will mean long sunny spells as well. That's what we like to hear on your Manchester weather forecast, isn't it? So let's take a look at this week's weather in more details. Here it comes. Thursday is looking sunny and cloudy with the temperatures of 22 Celsius. Friday is looking sunny with the temperatures of 23 Celsius. And as we very much look forward to the weekend right now, Saturday will be sunny with the temperatures of 24 Celsius and Sunday is going to be even hotter, sunny with the temperatures of 25 Celsius. So the sun is going to have his hat on, hip 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 hooray. Get that sun cream on and be very careful. That's it from this week's weather. Do join me again next week. And now it's time to hand over back to the studio for this week's brilliant episode of Your Manchester. Thanks. Well, unfortunately, no swim pool flower. Oh, do you know what I'm left time? Do you know what? Bring back, hashtag bring back the swim pool. Well, it wasn't a swim pool, it was a jacuzzi. Right, well, hashtag well, it might bring have been back a jacuzzi. jacuzzi. You never again. know, it might have just been bad wind. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> Uh, it could have no. been. If you are interested in joining us next week, which of course you will be, why not come and see us face to face, everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, we've got a fantastic live show as part of Hope Fest. That's taking place on July the 20th, and that will take place at 7.30. We've got fantastic guests on there, such mm -hmm. as uh, the wonderful Denise Welsh. Yes, Mark Bittlestone. Obviously, you say that one. Then we've got <laughs> Sue Devaney. We've also got Mark Llewellyn talking to the legend that is Annie Wallace. And Davina De Campo. And Davina De Campo, plus all your lovely hosts from your Manchester mm -hmm. will be there. So if you want to get tickets for that, here's the little linkette. Um, in the meantime, everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. Stay shabbered, stay gold. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Your Manchester. Manchester.